Early childhood educators who have concerns about technologies are absolutely um, uh, wise to have concern. So let me be clear that it's not okay that kids who are three, four, and five years old are consuming as much you know, media as they, as they are. The average four-year-old is consuming between three and four hours of media, and a lot of it is television. And clearly, early childhood educators, particularly those who are working with vulnerable families, are concerned about ambient noise or distracted attention with very, very busy adults, understandably, parking their children in front of technologies. I mean, how many of us have used, you know, Sesame Street in the past for a half an hour break to put dinner up or to um, take a shower? So I don't want anybody to have a guilt trip about that sort of thing, but I also don't want folks to think that it's really okay to have three, four, five hours of education, uh, of media use of any sort. Um, it's one of the reasons why Sesame Street and PBS and other good media choices, you know, here in North Carolina are available for busy families because they've got a cooking curriculum, they've got brand equity over a period of time, and honestly, they're good for you. So when early childhood educators have a concern, it's more around the types of screens, the types of media. That digital media diet that I suggested before needs to consist of high quality content, good stuff for your child's passions, and delivered in a place that makes sense. Half an hour here, 20 minutes there, as opposed to ambient noise, addictive, crack-like you know, games for very young minds that is not the kind of variety and the kind of nurturance and sustenance that those children need. So concern is good. Poly, um, being, um, you know, having your head down in the sand, saying that we should stop at all, is also, I think, at this point, not constructive. So what we're trying to create is a series of notes and advice and research that will be practically oriented for finding the good stuff, where are the right resources for a harried educator or a parent who lives in this ubiquitous digital wild west, where can they find the good stuff? So, we try to point out that there are resources. There's Common Sense Media, there's Balfour Labs, there's Teachers with Apps, there's Children's Technology Review. There's folks who've taken the time. There's parent sites where, you know, folks are sharing, not, you know, um, by word of mouth, where they're finding the good stuff. But we do have an issue where the curation and the discovery process, and we need to train educators and parents much more widely on the fact that there are, uh, I like to say, guides within the digital wild west.